Hello ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Olson from TextLearn.com and welcome to lesson 6.1 of the Intro to Java series. In this lesson we're going to learn about file input streams and how they can be used with Java in order to open and read from a file. So first off we're going to talk about bytes and bytes are groups of binary digits, one and zeros, known as bits and most commonly a byte is made up of eight individual bits. The goal of this topic is to learn how to save and load information stored in bytes to and from the computer's hard drives. Data saved on secondary storage devices such as the hard drive is known as persistent data because it exists after the program has closed. Computers load and save data using streams, which are sequences of bytes. So we can think of these streams as being channels through which the bytes kind of flow. And input streams are used to load data, and output streams are used to save data. Then we're going to talk a little bit about input and output streams, but spe more specifically, in this topic, we're going to be discussing, or this section of topic six, we're going to be discussing how to use the input streams, and then we'll get to the output streams in a couple sections from this one. So there's two types of files that we can deal with. We have text files, which are processed as sequences of characters and they're divided into lines using an end of line symbol. And then we also have binary files which are processed as sequences of bytes. So that's kind of like processing it as being text versus just data. So the file input stream and file output stream objects are found in the java.import input output IO package of the Java API which allows us to input and output bytes from files. And IO, like I just said, stands for input output. In our first example for this topic, we will be using a file input stream to read and print the contents of a text file. So basically all we're going to do with our first little demo here is we're going to go ahead, find a text file, open it up, and print the contents to the console. So this diagram kind of shows you what we're going to be doing. We have a source file. We read it with this file input stream as bytes, and that kind of brings the data into our program and we can manipulate it as variables and, and things like that. So we have import java.io.file input stream, so that's what we're going to be importing. And we also have these things known as exceptions, and exceptions are basically errors that occur when something goes wrong. And specifically, the file input stream throws a type of exception. So say, for example, the program was unable to find a file for whatever reason it might throw a file not found exception. And the overall class for the more general form of these exceptions is just a general IO exception. And that's the one we're going to be using. So we're gonna have we're gonna have to import this exception. And if we don't add this throws declaration here, throws IO exception into our main method when we try to use the file input stream to read information, it's not gonna work and Eclipse will tell us we're doing something wrong. So just know for now that we're going to have to have these exceptions in there. So if something does go wrong, it throws an exception. And we're going to talk a bit more about exceptions specifically and how to handle them in the next section. So for now, we're just going to kind of just know they're there. And um, we're going to sort of use them, but not really. OK. So let's open up Eclipse and create a new Java project. And I'm going to call this 6 underscore 1. And give it a class to do our demo in. And I'm just going to call this file input demo. So let's go ahead and give it a main method, click finish, load that guy up, and now we are ready to create our first input stream. So to do this, we're going to have to import Java IO file input stream. So we'll have that guy in there. And we'll also import the exception. So import Java IO IO exception. And of course, if we forgot to do that, there will be things that pop up all over Eclipse, little red lines, quick fixes we can use to do that for us. So let's go ahead and open the file input stream. So we're going to have a file input stream, and we're just going to call it input stream equals new 
file input stream and then as the parameter there we put quotes in and we're going to give it a file name. Now this file is going to be a file located in our project directory. So in this case it's going to be in my six underscore one folder of the workspace. And I'm just going to call this readme.txt. And that statement with a semicolon. So now we have the file input stream open. And I forgot to add the throws declaration to the main method like I just talked about. So quick fix. I clicked that red line there and it added throws file not found exception. And it's going to give me more bug errors, so let me just change that. We're going to have it throw IO exception. And like I said, that's just kind of a more generic form of any type of input output exception that can occur. So that'll pretty much cover anything we'll run into here. Okay, so to read the file, we're going to have to create an integer i and a character c. If you remember, we're going to be reading this file as being kind of like um, a bunch of characters. So we're going to go through each individual character in the file and print that out to the console. So we're going to have an int i and a char c. The integer is going to be the byte and the character is going to be we're going to cast that into a character. So I'll show you how that works in a second. So now we can read input from file. So while i equals input dot read. So we're setting that integer to the next thing in the file. So it's just going to go through the file and go one at a time. Just kind of keep going. And so it's just going to keep reading until it runs out of stuff and we will do not equal to negative one. And we know once it's negative one that we've reached the end of the file. And I should do input stream, not input, okay. So while i equals input stream dot read not equal to negative one, we can go ahead and start printing out the thing that i is equal to. So we're gonna have to cast i to a character. And to cast i to a character, we just have to put the word char in parentheses, stick that in front of the i, and that turns our integer, which has some type of character or number, and it just turns that into a character for us. So now, instead of being an integer, it's a character. Pretty easy, simple. And we can just print that out, just mount that print c, and that will print our character into the console. So it's just gonna go character by character in the file, and print out each character to the console, and that is really all there is to this program. The only thing we have to do is, like with scanners, we're going to have to close the file input stream when we're done using it. So we do input stream dot close. Okay, and that looks like it is ready to go. So let's create a test file. So I'm going to go to my workspace, which in this case is in my home directory workspace six underscore one and this is where I'm going to want to create my new text file and we're going to call this readme readme.txt and I'm not seeing the file extension so let me just change that real quick so let's see folder and search options view and you probably want to do this too if you don't already do this and hide extensions for known file types I'm going to uncheck that and now we can see that it's readme.txt. So that is the whole name of the file there. So we know that we got that right. So let's open that up and add some text to it. Hello world, my name is Kevin. Save that. Oops. Save that. There we go. And we'll run this program, see what happens. Okay. And as you can see, it printed out the contents of that text file. So it read each individual character, converted it from the integer value into a character, so from the byte into a character, and then we printed that value out. So that is how we can read input from a file using the file input stream. Now the next thing we can use is a scanner in combination with the file input stream. And this will just be a little more helpful for us. We can kind of do a few more things once we have a scanner involved. So we're going to leave this the same, open file, input stream, and we're going to also be creating a scanner. So we'll do scanner, file, scanner, equals new, scanner, 
And instead of using system.in, that's the input stream for the console, so we don't want to use that, we're going to be using the input stream. So the file input stream specifically. And I need to import that scanner class, of course, from the Java Utilities package. I don't need that file like found out exception up there. Okay. So now we have a scanner, and we're going to use a scanner now to read, to do the same thing we just did, but now we're going to use a scanner. So fun stuff, right? Okay. So while file scanner dot has next line, and this has next line thing, it's just going to be like, okay, well, file scanner has a next line. So it's going to read through each line until we no longer have any, any lines left. And then we can just do system out print line. So we'll print the whole line at a time. And we can do file scanner dot next line. And that'll give us the entire line all at once there. So instead of going character by character, now we're going line by line. Okay, so let's go ahead and close that the same way we did last time. So file scanner dot close, just like any scanner, they, that needs to be closed. And we also have to close the input stream. So now we've closed the scanner and the input stream, and let's test this out. So let's clear my console and run it again. Hello world, my name is Kevin. So that printed out the file using a scanner. So in addition to the next line, we can also use has next, and this will actually get word by word. So we'll change it from has next line to has next, and instead of next line, we'll just do next. And let's print, let's run, run that, see what happens there. Okay, you can see it went word by word, or like set by set, wherever there wasn't white space, and it did hello world, my name is Kevin. So it's read each word at a time, and then we went and printed those words individually out on their own separate lines. So that is the file scanner has next line, next line, has next, and next method. So those are very useful methods for dealing with files when we want to have scanners involved. Let me see if there's anything else here. I don't believe there is. Okay, so review exercise 6.1. Create a program which reads a file called readwords.txt. The program should use a scanner and a file input stream to read the file. Use one array list of type string to store each word. Use a parallel array of integer to hold the count for each word. So basically, I want you to create a program which is going to count how many occurrences of each word a comes out in a file called readwords.txt. So this is the sample here. I have a text file, readwords.txt, and the contents of it is Kevin, Kevin, Bob, Bob, Bill, Jackson, Samantha. So it's got all those names in it, and we just want to go ahead, and when we run the program, it'll say Kevin occurred two times, Bob occurred two times, Bill occurred one time. So it's just going to count how many times each word occurs in that file. And to do this, we're going to be using two array lists. We're going to have one array list of words and one array list of integers. And the indexes are going to be related. So for example, the first word that it comes across is going to be Kevin in this case. So that would mean that when we find that first word, we would set the index at 0 for the array list of words to Kevin and the index at zero for the array list of the number of times that words occurred to one. Then when it hits Kevin again, it's going to look through and we're going to use the, you should be using the, um, what method is it? The contains method for the array list to check this word against the array list. And if it's already in there, then we, we find it using the index of method. And this was discussed in the last section of or topic five, the array list section. So go back and look at that if you need a refresher. So once it comes across Kevin the second time, it'll go back to index zero in the count, the integer array list that's counting the numbers. And we're going to set it from, it's going to be one when we find it initially. And now we're going to increment that by one to two. So it'll be like Kevin, the, it'll be, it'll say Kevin has two now. And then it'll find that Bob there, Bob, it'll set the, first 
This will be the first index now in the array list, and it'll set that to Bob. And then for the count array list, it'll set the first index to one. We find it a second time, we set that first index to two, and so on and so forth for all the other names in the file. And the solution, as always, is posted here. So just check out the website and click View Solution to view that. If you run into any problems, feel free to leave a comment in the video on my website or visit the forums. Thanks for watching.